kind of elevated because of the phone distance from me, so we're live. All right. So welcome everybody that's on the watching the Facebook live video. I'm just going to give a little. Um, we're we're doing our Hebrew class, and if you're not able to be here in person, these are available to do online, and so you can leave a comment. We can get information for you. All right. That's all I need to do with that. So we're on page two, table of contents, and that's just so you guys can, you know, go to stuff quickly. Let's, and this is the part I'm going to try to skim through, okay? So this is called The Hebrew Learning Revolution. This book is a companion book for the HLLV Interlinear Torah, which is a translation of the first five books of the Bible from Hebrew to English that I've translated and, and that we've kind of self-published. But we don't need to talk about that right now, so let's keep going. Okay, so I've got some different bullet points here. The first one says, why use this method for learning Hebrew? Okay, this is, you know, some of this is kind of my opinion, but I, I think a lot of people will feel the same way that I do. It's more interesting. So like, yeah, if I do say so myself, it's more interesting than other methods of learning Hebrew because I know I've taken several different types of courses in Hebrew when I first started learning and I really had a hard time with them. I wasn't learning very well. A lot of them were like college level type. And I remember some of the curriculum, I literally couldn't understand what it said in English. And, and so I can't understand the English and I'm trying to learn Hebrew, a foreign language, but you literally had to be an English major to follow some of the curriculum. And, and I'll give you some examples of that. It's kind of funny, actually. Okay, and this course uses the scripture themselves to teach Hebrew. Okay, instead of I put a dry textbook. Interest is the key to learning. And so my testimony was, is, you know, I was learning these uh, courses of Hebrew, and I'm spending like a year in the Hebrew class, and I'm just not able to stick with it. You ever been there where you're just not that interested? Because what I didn't really want to do a class. I didn't want to go back to school necessarily. But I, what I did want to do is I wanted to be able to not take, you know, just what somebody else says, this is what that means in English. I wanted to get into Scripture because I had a love for the Word of God, a love for the Scriptures, and I wanted to dig deeper. You know, so often you'll... You know, you hear people saying like, hey, you know, do you know what that says in Hebrew? It's actually quite a bit different than what it says in English. And it's really interesting that there's even some major doctrines of the faith that are impacted by the fact that we're reading it in English and it wasn't um, the English word that we've given for a particular Hebrew word just wasn't actually a good compatible fit okay let me give you an example okay this is going to blow away you know if people read the read the scripture in hebrew and aramaic we wouldn't have some of the goofy teachings that we see you know in the western church today okay so one of those things is is that if you believe in the lord jesus christ you'll be saved and that just means that you just have an intellectual affirmation that something's true. Okay? And so people are like, well, I believe, so I'm saved. Okay? You would never, ever get that in the original language. Right? So Yeshua, he, he spoke Hebrew, but the lingua franca of the time when Jesus was walking the earth was Aramaic, which is a sister language to Hebrew, and it has a 70 to 80% vocabulary share with Hebrew. And so when he was talking, he was teaching in Aramaic, okay? Because that's what most of the people understood the best, right? That's what the little children were learning in their households. And that word for faith or to believe in Aramaic and in Hebrew, because it's a, it's, a, it's a direct equivalent share of a root word with Hebrew and Aramaic, means to be steadfast and faithful and true, to be true. To be true is you don't just make a confession 
but that's not what's on the inside, right? If, if, like if you're testing gold and it's just gold plated, you do a test on that and you get past the gold and you get to the junky stuff on the inside, well, that would not be true. But if you want gold to be true, it's the same consistency on the inside as it is on the outside. And so that word is translated faithful and true to be steadfast and to commit and surrender. And question, so, Mark? what I must I do to be saved? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever will commit to be steadfast and be faithful to the end shall be saved. Wow. It's from the word, word. Not quite what we necessarily no. get in English. No. From the word emunah, right? Emunah, right. And that's where we get the, you know, like the idea, amen. So, yeah, so that's really, yeah, that's you know, and I think that that's a really important doctrine. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I know people that think, well, I believe that he, that, but they, they don't, you know, live in a way that they're living to serve him. And so, but maybe that's all they ever heard or what they were told. You see what I'm saying? So, things like that made me want to learn the language. All right, I'm not supposed to take a long time going through this. That's one of those things we call a rabbit trail, right? Rabbit trail. <laughs> they used to call it a rabbi trail in my last class, but I'm no rabbi, so. But it was funny. It was a funny um, little phrase. Okay, so, and there's different reasons we might want to learn Hebrew. Um, for me, is I wanted to get into the word more. Okay, so why is learning Hebrew important for those that are students of the Bible? Um, number one, nothing lost in translation. You're not relying on what somebody else, you know, is telling you, right? Yeah, searching <laughs> things out for yourself. Um, no more commentary and opinion inserted into Scripture. And I can say this, it's impossible to have an English translation and not have it be... A commentary mm -hmm. it's not it's not possible because when you have a Hebrew word it'll have two three four sometimes five different meanings and only context brings out what it means and so the translator literally has to pick one of those for you and say well I think it means this mm -hmm. and so whenever you read an English translation that's what you're getting so and usually context does make it pretty clear. Okay, so, skimming here, next page. We're on page four. And, I, and one of the things about this class, I told you guys, I warned you about introductions. They're not as interesting, all right? Hopefully it is kind of, I think it's kind of interesting so far, though. All right? <laughs> I'm even interested. <laughs> Um, how long is it going to take you to read scripture? And that was a big deal for me because, like, I'm taking a class that didn't use the Bible in learning Hebrew. So I'm thinking, well, i got to take this class for like a year or two before I can even begin to crack the book open and get into it. But that's really what I'm interested in. So interest isn't really involved in my learning. Therefore, I'm not learning, and I keep quitting. So... I got to a point where I had a, you know, stuff I paid good money for, you know, a computer program, a Hebrew primer, some college-based materials I had bought, and I ended up, after using those for quite a while, just put them aside and stopped using them, and I just started going into Scripture, and I just started in Genesis chapter 1, looking at the first word, and then taking it and, and looking at the definition and just going through and learning Hebrew while I studied scripture because that worked for me and there wasn't really a curriculum for it but at, so it was a slower process for me because I was basically doing what I needed to do without anything to follow and once I did get there I decided well hey I bet you there's people that are just like me that want to learn the language but they want to get right into scripture and we want to make it a faster way of doing it because some of the course stuff, they go into all these things that are unnecessary for learning. Okay? All right. So how long? Um, you know, okay, we got to get the alphabet down, right? So these first three weeks, 
We don't get into the Genesis 1 at all because we got to learn the alphabet. The, who, who knows all of the letters? Simon does. All right. Wow. That's great. Um, so stick with us through these three weeks. <laughs> and I promise you, once we get past this introduction, we are going to just really get into some awesome stuff and start learning. Um, once we get through the alphabet and you know your alphabet, you can start reading the first sentence in, sentence in Genesis chapter 1 within one week. Okay? You'll be able to read the first sentence. So you're already on your journey. Within a few weeks into it, you'll be re reading in a few verses. Okay? And so, I'm not lying. If somebody wants to do this daily, okay, whatever you do daily is natural. Okay? Um... Doing a class once a week will only do you so much good. But if that's all you do, at that rate, maybe by the time you die, yeah. if you live a long life, you'll be able to read Hebrew. Okay? <laughs> and so it's my hope that if you really have an interest, um, you'll just start making a practice daily for yourself. Okay, And my... And my desire would be that that would extend beyond the scope of this class. Like once you get out of this class, you'll have gotten a foundation that you're through Genesis chapter 1. And you literally, from that point, just start at Genesis chapter 2. And just keep reading. And, 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 and you'll be able to do it. Trust me, you'll be able to do it. And you'll, you'll enjoy it. And if, and if you like to study the Bible, that... You know, being in the Word every day is a really good thing, right? <laughs> Psalms 1, man, blessed is a man, you know, who in his law, he meditates day and night. He'll be like a tree planted by the waters. And so it's really important that it's you're doing it in a way that's interesting to you. Okay. In this, part of the thing about this curriculum is I've done what we call, my wife and I have called, we put the cookies on the bottom shelf where everybody could reach them, right? You know, you know the children, they got the cookies that lie so they can't reach them, and that's what it feels like some of the classes do. They put things out of reach, and they explain them in such a way you're like, man, I, I'm never going to get this. I remember feeling like that. I'll never get this. And then realizing how easy it was if you took it with a more simplified approach. One of the things we don't use in this class is vowel points. Okay, so in modern Hebrew today, when you're learning Hebrew, they use vowel points to learn how to pronounce. All right, but that's not original to Hebrew. Those were not part of the original Hebrew language. Those were added by the Masoretes about the 10th century AD. And so that's when vowel points were added. And they're not necessary to read Hebrew. They might be necessary to learn how to pronounce a word correctly or to converse in Hebrew. But if you were to go to Israel today and read anything, there's no vowel points, okay? Because they really don't use them. So it's more like memory. So when we're, and I'm sorry at the introduction here, but when you were, if, you're, if you had children and you're teaching your children how to speak, you do it by talking with them, right? Back and forth. And so, what we recommend, if you want to learn how to pronounce the words correctly, is listen to it being read and repeat after it. That's your best way to learn how to pronounce it. Not studying the vowel point charts. So, they have their place. Alright, so now, I'm on page 6. So I never saw anything that was out there that put it this way. That how simple. But once I learned Hebrew, I was like, oh my gosh, that's all that is needed. To, that it can be so simplified into basically three or four things that you need to learn to be able to read Hebrew. It's so simple. I could, I'm telling you, I had dozens, if not a hundred pages that I was told I needed to memorize in order to learn Biblical Hebrew. 
And I just wasn't interested. I didn't want to sign up for that. As I've learned it, and now I you know, read fluently in Hebrew, I realize that there's really, there's, I could, I could break this into two things, but it will make it four, okay? Recognizing root words. So here's where I want you to take some notes, all right? If you have your Hebrew class itinerary, you can flip that over, and that'll make a great note page on the back, okay? Write root words down. Hebrew root words, the majority, almost all root words are three letters, okay? That is the standard. There are, on a rarer, a little more rare uh, occasion, you'll have a two-letter root, which is called a parent root, all right? But those are pretty rare. Usually we have three letters and three letters only in a root word. All right, so that's what I want you to write down, three-letter root words. And so you need to start building a vocabulary. I want you to write build vocabulary. So three-letter roots, that would be like dog, cat, see, spot, run. That's four <laughs> letters, but it could have started as a three-letter. You know, see, spot, run. You know, the children's book. That's Hebrew. They don't, they don't start out as really long words. But then to Hebrew words, usually when a Hebrew word appears, it has an added letter. Everybody, who, who has, um, Simon, have you, I'm, I'm just curious how far your Hebrew knowledge goes because you, you read um, it in. I, I uh, study Kabbalah, uh, Hermetic Kabbalah, uh -huh. which okay. does correlate with the Hebrew letters. Yeah, and right. And from right. that, from sitting with those every day, uh -huh. I've got the alphabet down. Right. But, I'm but as far as grammar rules and stuff, you're not, not familiar. Not okay, okay, okay. Good. So, when we add a letter to a word, we do it, in, first of all, I want to give you an example. We do it in English all the time. Okay? Let's take the word paint. Okay? Paint is a verb when you paint something, right? If I add letters onto that word, let's say ing, then what are we doing? Now we're painting. Do you know what I did by adding letters on the end of the word paint? I changed the verb tense. You guys got that? First of all, I want you to know is that what I'm talking about, you're already very familiar with. Because if I can get you guys to connect with, with what you're already familiar with, you're going to learn this language. And I do some stuff in this class that I don't think anybody else does, and people are going to be like, that's weird. But you know what I'm doing? Is I'm connecting you to something that you already understand. And so don't be surprised if I'm putting English words up here, because I don't want you to focus on the word. I want you to focus on the added letter. Okay? What are, she's writing paint. Okay. And if we got multiple colors, then we can... Uh, and, and we'll try to keep root words in red, but you're okay with the black for now. And would you write the word run up there as well? Yeah, you don't want your paint to run. <laughs> it's a bad right. deal. You don't want the paint to run. <laughs> and then let's also write the word house under that. Paint the wrong house. All right. Now, in, in, go ahead and in, in green, write ing on the end of paint. And so I'm going to make a point here. Who knows what, a pre, what the word prefix means? Everybody know what the word? Yeah. Some people don't know the technical terms. That's an added letter to the beginning of a word. Okay? Pre means come before, right? Mm -hmm. Prefix. You fix a letter on the front of a word, and it's a prefix. The ing is at the end of a word. 
suffix. That's a suffix. It's added, you know, sophit means the end, right? Latin term, I believe. And so you have your suffix, letters added at the ending. And then another thing that we'll see is what we call an infix. Can anybody guess where an infix goes? In the middle. In the inside of the word, okay? And so that's what Hebrew does. English does it a little bit. Hebrew does it almost at all times. As a matter of fact, 90% of the time when you see, probably, somewhere around there probably, I didn't do the statistics, <laughs> when a Hebrew word occurs, it has a suffix or a prefix or an infix in it or multiple of all the above. Right. Okay, so I'm going to come over here in front of the... I need a blue marker and a green. Okay. That's cool. So, and here's, here's where I do this unorthodox. Because in Hebrew, the word for run... is a, that's a bad sorry, but anyway, is roots. And roots means to run. You know what's a good way to memorize what roots, how, that roots means run? Anybody ever seen the movie Roots? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Man, Kunte Kinte, he's running all the time. That's why they called it Roots, because Kunte Kinte was running until they cut half of his foot off. <laughs> anyway, that's my own little... Mental we'll remember remembrance that. <laughs> roots. Remember Kunte Kente getting his foot cut off because he's running. So now you know. Now you know what that means. So, but I'm not going to put the Hebrew up here, okay? Because you don't know that yet. And I'm going to be, as it were, speaking Greek to you in a language you don't understand. And you're going to get confused because there's too much information at once. And so we're going to make this really simple. And so I'm going to draw an olive. And I'm not the best writer. I do a lot of reading and very little writing. And so i got to You're watch myself. You're not the best myself. scribe. <laughs> so that olive means something. That's our first letter of the alphabet, which we're learning today. Okay? That olive... I'm going to write it over here. I'll get out of the way once I'm done writing equals I will. Mm. Now I'm going to show you something. Here's it's, something to write it's, down. It's one you guys five. write this stuff down. Yeah. Hebrew, when it's in a third in, in the three letter root word, is in the past tense. Okay? The default form of a root word is past tense. And so this is ran. Okay, if I just write roots up there in Hebrew, that means he ran. Everybody got that? I'm actually going to pull up my... We're going to repeat that particular statement every single class multiple times. I'm going to pull up my... Olive. So. Go to page 12. I know I'm jumping around a little bit, but actually I think it's better when I'm not just reading off the page. And so you can see roots there. And roots is he ran. But if I add an olive to it, ran becomes run. Because that's what happens when I have, that means I, because olive means I will. I will run. So you were learning the first letter, Olive. We're on that page. What page number is that again? 12. Page 12. Oh, yeah, I like That's kind of nice. All right, so Olive sounds like uh. ah. Uh. Okay? This is really easy. So when we go through the Olive Bet, you know, Olive Bet, Gimel, Dalit, they sound like the letter that starts the word. Some of you already know that, but so this that's nice though. 
So Aleph is ah. So can somebody guess what bet sounds like? Next page. Bet. Bet or bait. There's different ways people pronounce it. B. Just look at the first letter of the title of that letter, okay? And that's what it sounds like in English. Gimel. Anybody guess what a gimel sounds like? Hard G. A G. Yep, a hard G. Dalit. D. D. This is easy, right? <laughs> and we're going to do some really fun stuff. Like, I'll have you spell it. Once you get your, your Hebrew letters down, I'll have you spell an English word with Hebrew letters just so that you're making the connection of the sounds like. Right? All right, let's go back to page 12. So, all of We're not going to focus a lot on these, the usages as prefixes in this class. I just wanted to introduce that concept to your mind. Because the sooner I introduce a concept to your mind, you may not understand it right now. It still may be, like, kind of cloudy or foggy. But several weeks into this, you're going to be like, everybody knows that. <laughs> if you want to say I will, put it on the front of, um, you know, the, the verb. Does that make sense to everybody? And we all understand fixed letters or added letters. So, one other thing I want to say. So, in Hebrew is a really efficient language. And I'm going to write this all in... Um, English, but if I want to say, we, let's say we have the word hit. And we got Bill and Ted, and Bill hit Ted, right? Or let's say so-and-so ran after so-and-so and chased him. Well, I can write that in one word. So basically, I can write a sentence in Hebrew... By writing one word. I can write, and they ran after him. That would be one word in Hebrew. And they ran after him. One word. So that's really efficient, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because we've got the word, so we're focusing, in that instance, we would be focusing on one Hebrew word, which is run, and then there would be an added letter that is they, then you got your, and you got one letter you would add for and, which would be the vav. If we wrap, if we added a vav, then that would be obviously if that was Hebrew, it'd be over here, right? Because Hebrew, yeah. does everybody understand Hebrew is right to left, right. and so there is a little bit of weirdness when I'm adding letters onto. English words because the, the English is going left to right. If this was the Hebrew word, I'd be this would be the front of the word right here, right? Okay. So that's pretty cool how Hebrew does that. And honestly, you know what it does? It makes it way more simple than English or a lot of other languages because. When you learn the added letters, once you have those down and you know what they mean, you just need to know the root word. That's all you need to know. And, and that's how simple Hebrew is, is you build a vocabulary, and that vocabulary keeps growing, and you understand what added letters are. Okay? Sean? Yes. So then, the root words are three letters... Mm -hmm. Is it reasonable to assume that the prefix is, is, only, is always going to be a first and second letter? Um, they're, in front they're, of that, that, that Yeah. Letter? Usually a prefix is just one letter. Okay. Sometimes there's two prefixes. <laughs> like I might put, okay. let me give you an example. So we were saying, I will. I will run. Or I put a bob there. And that equals, and I will 
run. So in that situation, I do have two prefixes, but they have two different meanings. Suffixes are a little different because a lot of the suffixes are two letters. Some are two letters, some are one letter. Okay? And there's a and there's a list of those, but what I don't want to do is throw too much information at you guys today. So I'm gonna that's probably as technical as we're gonna get, and we're gonna get into the alphabet now. Let me see what time and, we're And did we mention what root words that root words are usually verbs? Yeah, or root words verbs? generally start okay. off at ver as verbs, almost always. Right. We don't always know the verb root for certain words that occur, though. Okay? But, so a verb is an... Action. Most, they, the, they are action words. And they start out, when you get a noun, that noun comes from a verb. So the verb comes first, and then the noun. Right? Mm -hmm. So, and, and it's... English, I'm going to connect it to what you're used to, and I've got this word run. So, you know, if we want to make run, which is a verb, right? How do I make that a noun? Like runner? Runner. I add, I add on a suffix, well, and I take the word run, which is a verb, and I make it a noun by putting runner on there. Someone who runs. Isn't this great? We're talking about English yeah. at our Hebrew class. And actually, I, I need to bring these concepts up to you so that you realize that, because I've done this class quite a few times, and it's gotten a lot better <laughs> since the first class, because I learned all the things that I shouldn't do, and I watched people's eyes roll up in the back of their head, and they're like, huh? <laughs> and it's like, there's got to be a way to simplify this. This is actually right. very familiar to if you work in the medical field and you've taken yeah, any true. kind of medical terminology, medical terminology. Uh -huh. it's sure. all prefixes, suffixes. Yeah. yeah, right. And also when I was in Germany, I took a German class, and people get really intimidated by German words that are this right. long. Uh -huh. But it's the same concept. They just keep it's adding and right. adding it's like and adding sentence. rather than us having a sentence. Mm -hmm. They I've just seen, have one right. word, word with... Right. Multiple meanings. I've seen Hebrew words that are 10 to 12 letters long, not including the vowels. That's unusual, but it's, it, there's like the name of this guy in Isaiah, Maher Shahal Hashabaz, or something like that. And, it, and when you do that, it's, it's like this whole story that's being yeah, told. Right. right? Which is cool. Yeah. All right. We're coming back to the alphabet. I'm going to backtrack and make sure I didn't skip anything important. I'm going to mention about the action. Hebrew at its base is an action-oriented right. language, and we are quite different from that in this country, and that's illustrated when you ask someone to describe a pencil. <laughs> in English, in, in a Greek Western mindset, you describe a pencil. Well, it's yellow, it's about this long, uh, there's a little pink part at the end, it's pointy over here. Right. In a Hebrew Eastern mindset, says it's what you write with. Right. It's all connected to describe doing an action. The action. They describe its purpose as mm -hmm. opposed to right. just what it looks like. So they're very, very action oriented. So the language is so right. cool because everything stems from an action purpose. exactly a purpose for a lot of people like in the west their faith is an intellectual pursuit that's all theology it's all a bunch of words and so like i'll give you an example of that um so we think he you know yeshua said go ye therefore in all the world and make disciples of all nations teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. And so we take that in a Greek mindset, and we go, oh, that means that all the facts that are stuck in my head, yeah. I now need to stick into your head. Mm -hmm. And so we send, send them to Bible college, and we fill their heads full of facts, but we don't teach them action, we don't teach them how to show love in deed and in truth. But we'll show them how to do it in word. Or we'll show them the concept. 
But in the Hebrew mindset, if we're going to make a disciple, then then you got to, we're, we're getting up at 5.30 in the morning, and, and we're going to go out and milk the cows, and then we're going to go to work, and we're going to, you know, if Yeshua was a carpenter, then, then we're going to build a table. And while we're doing that, we're going to learn how to love people, and we're and you're gonna and when it, and when the person who's doing the discipling is gonna pray, or he's gonna go feed the poor, right? And he's gonna take that guy, and they're gonna go, and they're gonna do that together, and that's discipleship in an Eastern mindset. And well, I'm telling you, like we got it all goofed up, <laughs> because if you really want to mess somebody up. I mean, unfortunately, send them to Bible college. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, oftentimes it'll just zap the fire right out of them yeah, yeah. as they get, as they see faith turned into an intellectual concept rather than um, a way to live. Right. Make sense? Right. Yeah. All right. That's good. Yeah. That's real good. Now, I just want you guys to, um, because I'm skipping this. I, part of your class, and you'll see in your homework, is just review these pages because you're not, and just read it, okay? Because there's a lot of good information there, but not necessary for our class. And so I'm skipping some pages because it's just not necessary that I comment on them. Because you can read them. All right, so now we're on page nine, alphabet and charts. And I'll read it. Following are the charts. I strongly encourage you to refer back to these often and eventually, eventually memorize what they teach as you study the scriptures in Hebrew. Therefore, we will continue with no further introduction and everybody can say amen. <laughs> and we'll dive right into learning Hebrew while studying the scriptures. Now that's actually not true because that's only true if you already know your alphabet. So we don't get to do that yet. <laughs> I, this class originally was a class that I did where um, you just I just said, hey, just learn your alphabet. And then, then I'm going to teach you Hebrew. And then people would come and like, yeah, I got my alphabet. I think I know it. And then and we were teaching them the alphabet because <laughs> they didn't know it. And so I realized that that really needed to be part of the class. Okay, some of this stuff's important. Like I said, first class is the most, or it's the least interesting, even though it is interesting. Um, this book was originally written to teach Hebrew to a student based on the assumption that he or she learned and memorized the Hebrew alphabet. I just said that. I have received feedback that it would be helpful if this book contained tools to help a new student who does not know the alphabet yet. In response to this, we have added alphabet worksheets at the end of the chart section as well as alphabet flashcards. It is very important to take the time to fill out the worksheets. A person does not learn even half as well by reading something as when they actually write it out. And so as we're going on and here's something to make note of before you write in your books, you might want to make some copies for more practice that might be helpful for you. You don't have to. You can just take a blank sheet of paper and you can just continue writing them out. So that's just a suggestion, and you might just decide you just want to write them out. So when you want to do that Olive Bet song, I can connect my phone to that screen. Oh, well, that's awesome. I know, fun, huh? I think that we could probably get into the Olive Bet here. Um, there's a color code system. As we go through this book, I'm not going to talk about it. Read the book here, and, and you'll see what, what I'm talking about. And, and you saw it a little bit here, as I have root words in red, prefixes in blue, suffixes in green. You kind of get the point. So try not to do labor things. Okay, on page 11, I used to do this class, and the only thing I got to in the whole class was introduction, and then... My wife was like, you really need to <laughs> shorten that introduction. But I also realize it's important that you understand how the book works. And there's some things you need to know. So I can't, as much as I want to, I can't skip all introduction. So that's just a reference page. 
And we've got the Paleo. Paleo is the ancient writing. It's the way that it was written before the Babylonian captivity. So Hebrew used to look different than it does today. What we, write, what we call Hebrew today is the Babylonian script or Aramaic script. Okay, So what we call Hebrew is actually Aramaic script. It's what was being used in Babylon. And that's what the Hebrews learned when they were in captivity and were in, taken over by the Babylonian Empire. And that's when the font changed. Okay. And so we got, it just shows you here, it shows you the paleo, the modern, the name. Okay, so I, you notice under Aleph here, if everybody's looking, it says any vowel. Mm -hmm. So even though ah or a would be the most primary sound of Aleph, in some words it could, it could sound like a ooh or, you know, e even or different, um, or a, different sounds. A as opposed to A. Uh. But usually A. And then that just shows you what they sound like. So that's that page. That's a good page to refer back to as you're learning your alphabet. So make, make yourself familiar with it over the next three weeks as we learn this. Alright, so here we are. And we're going to... I'm going to give us a break from listening to me talk. Which is probably good. I get tired of hearing myself talk. <laughs> Raquel's going to play the alphabet song and then we're going to sing along in, to a children's song, okay? And then I'm going to give you guys the links to these, to this. So then you can go watch it on YouTube. It'll be in your history. And so this week I want you to listen to a children's song over and over again as many times as you can. All right, go ahead. Can you can you move the cam? It probably won't pick it up. I don't know. Oh, what about the sound? Yeah, you're not connected on sound. Oh, well, it's not playing yet. I can see. Oh, it does. Can you turn it up? Maybe Jason. I like this because of the visual you get.
so I, we tried a few different Olive Bet songs, like one was all jazzy and stuff. Yeah, but after going I got through voted it, out on the jazzy one. She wanted that, but after going through it, like, that was the best for memorization. And so that's where we're that's at. That's great. And um, I'm going to give you, that link is on your sheet. Okay. Okay? So that has a, where's it? Do they have a slower version? Uh, <laughs> that's a, slower, yeah. That yeah. song is really enough. popular. You can, stop it. You can yeah. slow it down. It, it feels yeah. fast now, but as you go through, it'll okay. it'll start feeling better to you. Yes, uh, It looks to me like there were letters in there that weren't on here. Um, we're on page what? Three, three. Three. Yeah. Okay, oh yeah, let me explain that. So, three. so what happened yeah. there is they did have letters and that's because it's the same Hebrew letter with a different pronunciation. Gotcha. So you got bet, vet. Yeah, bet. But you notice that the letter was the same. Right. Just was remember the, it, the dot. Yeah, the dot. It's it, called a dot. It, remember it said cough cough? It's yeah. supposed to be cough cough. <laughs> cough cough. It's a, just a different pronunciation, see? And uh sheen and ah. seen. It's a, it's a point of where the dot is. Perfect. Seen okay. on the left. Seen. And I was going to mention that too, so I'm glad, but I might have forgot, so I'm glad you said that. Mm -hmm. So that's why on the video, it seems like you got extra letters. Uh -huh. It's just showing you um, the, the different okay. pronunciations of it. Okay? And you'll see that like on here for most of these. Like bet, I didn't put the V for that, but V is your primary. It can sound like V in modern. Um, pay or fay can be a P or an F. Oh, on page oh, on page down. thirteen, you have it as oh, a B okay. or V. Okay. For your bet, your next page. Oh, okay. So yeah. let's yeah. see, we're seven forty-one. I think we're doing good on time. Um, I'm gonna erase this. I want to just touch on the paleo meanings of the letters as we go. Okay. Which, it's really interesting. It's its own, it's its own course of study, and it's not something we're focusing on. But I want to give you an idea. When we look at the Aleph, it you see at the top of page twelve, it says Aleph. Word picture is an ox head, and that is the original way that that letter was written. Looks just like an ox head, and then there became a. A book type font that got used for it that looked, you know, it'd be like an ox head, you know, put a couple eyes there, right? Mm. And a nose. Mm -hmm. But the, the quick way of writing it was like that. It would even looking maybe a little bit more like that. And so that was an ox head. Oh, yeah, you have the paleo on your screen there. Okay. Cool. So, olive means strong, like an ox is strong. And also is a symbol for a leader. Okay? It's just something interesting as you're going through. It's nice to, as you're learning your, your alphabet, you might as well know what the original meaning of that letter is. Okay? Yeah. I'm going to give you an example. You want to come draw for me, Raquel? Sure. And... Go ahead and draw the olive and the bet. And then I'm going to have you write the word shalom. And I'm just going to scroll here. To spell R? Yeah. But in the paleo. Oh, that's your board then. Okay, but you can look on that screen and it's really easy. I actually learned to read Hebrew from in Paleo, and then I added modern, so I'm more natural in Paleo. He says I read Babylonian politics. <laughs> Babylonian music. <either. laughs> <laughs> All right. So, oh, the bet. Here you go. It's the it's this Paleo one mm -hmm. there. It's like a it's like a upside down B almost. Okay. And then you'll see an original outlay of a tent. You see that up here? When you had a tent, that's a layout of a tent, ancient Hebrew tent. 
is the woman's quarters would be back here and the guys would be up here so if you came into the house you'd have to deal with the man first right mm -hmm. and and so you go in and around and that's how the hebrew tent was mm -hmm. and so that's your bet is your home and so that's the word okay and so and this isn't a, a stretch like okay the word for house in hebrew is baked it's a house that's not a stretch it's it's the meaning of that word and so ah is the word in Hebrew for father. Chief house. Chief house. Chief of the house. Yep. The chief of the house. The strong leader of the house. Father. You think that's a coincidence? Sounds great. Mm -hmm. It's not. And so, and then if we put um, the word for heart we add a lama to that. It's his lave. And so that's that's interesting because that's the heart, the love of the Father. Oh. And so it, then that creates a root word. Right. It's that is a parent okay. root right there. That's an example of it. Remember I told you there were two letter roots? Right. That's a parent root. That's a, right. one of the rare... Like mother and father are both two letter word roots. Okay. So there's some okay. words that are two letter. And then when you add the lama, that would be the majority of them. Oh, really? right. Then when you go lave, adding just the, the English equivalent of an L onto the of, then that's heart. And um, that's a root word as well. That's also a root word. Okay. You want to write mm -hmm. shalom up here. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to scroll for you. And I'll just do one more. Do you want me to erase this or leave it? Yeah, you can erase it. The llama is a shepherd's staff. Yeah. And you get to write in paleo. And I'll scroll for you. So write your teeth. Heart is Aleph, is that Lamed? Lamed, Aleph, Bet. Oh, yeah, Lamed, Heart. Yeah, Heart right. is Lamed, Shepherd, Aleph, Bet. Okay. Which, Av, in modern sound, but anciently that Bet, Bet was just to be. Oh. So we have like Abba. Right. Right. And then, like, for love is Ahava. Oh. Ahav, and these words, um, and remember, so Av is the father, and, and this is love, and the hey means behold or look, and so love is behold the father, or behold the love of the father. So what are those letters for love? Aleph, Aleph hey, hey, and bet. bet, Ahav, and that's Ahava, that's love in Hebrew, and from the paleo, it's behold the Father or behold the love of the Father. And so that's it's kind of neat because you have the hey right in the middle of the av. Is that the an example of the infix? Um, no, that's a root word, oh, okay. actually. Okay. Yeah, that's a root word. It's funny because we have the two-letter root, right. and then there's a lot of three-letter roots that utilize those same gotcha. letters. Okay, so let's do shalom. Write your sheen, and then... No, okay. uh, just like right, T. You want me to do like... Yeah, looks like T. There you go. All right. And then your olive, like an ox head. Oh, wait. Oh, that's right. It doesn't help. I was getting a... Uh, get Lamed. There's your Lamed. It's a shepherd's I'm doing it for you. Tent peg. Tent peg or nail. Yep. Yes, you know, do your best rendition of it. <laughs> and then your mem. It's like, that's water. It's like a W again, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. With that long red at the bottom. Has a little leg on it. Sort of. All right. 
But in that situation, wouldn't uh, Mim would be final? Mim mm. yeah, But you're either. writing it in Paleo. Yeah, it would be. Yeah. Right, Paleo doesn't have any. So Sophie. that's a final, final or Sophie. Letters. So there's your modern. This isn't something I'm asking you guys to memorize. I know you might be a little bit like lost as I'm writing this. But I just want to explain so you understand Paleo. So this is Shalom, and this is the word for peace. And so it's really neat when you look at the word pictures for this because um, our idea of peace sometimes is, is like, I'm going to be at peace no matter what's going on around me. I'm just going to have peace. But the Hebrew meaning of peace is actually very different because the, the letter sheen is also the Hebrew word sheen is teeth. And that's the meaning of that word, it's teeth. Mm -hmm. And so it means to devour or destroy. Mm -hmm. Okay? So we got destroy. And then the next letter is your lamed, which is a shepherd's staff. Mm -hmm. And it has the idea of leader. Can you guys teach. See? I'll, yeah. I'll try to go back and forth so everybody in the class can see. Destroy the leader. The vav is a nail or a tent peg. Peg, and the, the meaning of it is to establish or fasten. Okay? So this is to establish. Alright, I ran out of the room, but you got my meaning. And so the mem, my m is the Hebrew word for water. The mem means water. And from water you have, you know, like choppy water is the idea of chaos. And so the mem has a idea of chaos. Everything's out of order. And so if you want peace, you destroy the leader in your or that strong thing in your life that is establishing chaos. In other words, don't try to be at peace with the chaos. Find out what's causing the chaos and eliminate it out of your life. Action. Isn't that neat? I think that's a really cool word picture for peace. Peace is to destroy oh, wow. that thing that is bringing chaos to your life. Wow. It's very action-oriented. That's beautiful. It's not, I'm just going to try to self, have peace. Self, right. The word, the word itself is self, self, It is. Right. And so when you go into paleo, every word is actually a sentence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so beautiful. It's really... So it's kind of See, contrary to so what's being touted now is like to just... Just be Zen. Yeah. <laughs> Rather than be a warrior. Be a warrior. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's so passive. It's Hebrew is a warrior language. Yeah, the, I mean. Yeah. Of Christianity, actually. Yeah. Western. We've, we've really got, is. you know, demasculation of men in America. And, no. You know, don't, you don't want to be don't a warrior. Don't have any feelings. But you know don't what? Don't have an opinion, a strong thought of anything. Right. Boy, I'll say. I, I love That's David amazing. in Scripture. Yeah. David, okay, David is... Um, yeah. This guy who's sitting out, he's watching the sheep, and he passes his time to writing love songs and poetry. <laughs> this is, you know, we would call a guy like that a wimp, yeah, cool right? Guy. But don't call David a wimp, <laughs> because he will remove your head from your body. <laughs> you know, this guy was a warrior. He took down Goliath. He was a mighty man of war. He took down a lion bear. and a bear right. at a very young age. Right. So... Absolutely. Just As saying. a youngster, he could, that sling, he was a trained warrior. He, 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 he was a lover of God, and he didn't have to be a wimp. Amen. And, you know, I like that, because I grew up in Los Angeles, and <laughs> I've been in a lot of fights in my youth. I've had a lot of fights, and I learned to be a warrior. And I'm glad that I didn't have to, you know... Hand in my man card when I became a follower of Yeshua. That and that doesn't mean you know I act like I used to act. I can be strong, but I can be strong. I can have love with strength. I think that we need you know we've lost that. Like yes, we absolutely. we really need that. So and anyway, we need it. tangents Very well here. Put. And we need it. Right, and we need it. And that's I love David because. It's like, you know what, I, I love to worship, I love to sing and praise, and that doesn't demasculate me, you know? So hallelujah for that. It's beautiful. Huh. 
Oh, I'm going to put in a little plug here. I have a, um, a little book. I think it's like 40 pages long. And it's, uh, it's called To Whom Was the Original Gospel Written and Preached? And it's a paradigm shifter. And, and what, it's, what it goes into is the history, yeah, the, the, his, the, un, Here it is. the unknown history of Christianity in the first century that we don't get because we're in the Western world and we get the westernized version of it and it's wrong. And so I go in there and I document what first century Christianity looked like and also what language it was written in. It wasn't, the New Testament was not, I can prove it, I did in that book, very well cited. Was And this goes against what's taught in almost every Bible college. It was not written in Greek originally. It was written in Greek, but it was written in an Aramaic original yeah. and then translated into Greek. Yeah. And so, anyway, those books are seven bucks if you want one. All right. So, but I, I wanted to bring that because I really feel like realizing that we've lost something. Mm -hmm. You know, we've lost hold of, in the Western world, we, we you know, we took a, we took a Semitic man named Yeshua, and we gave him an, a, a, a Western name, and we gave him blonde hair and blue eyes. <laughs> we made him look a little girly. I'm sorry, I mean, just tell the truth. Don't mean to offend anybody. Constantine and, um, does that. Yeah. And we changed... The hippie emo Jesus. You know, yeah. and, and, we, and we took an Eastern religion and made it into a Western mindset. And we call it Christianity. Mm -hmm. yes. And it's interesting when you go and you see what it originally looked like. Yeah. So anyway, that's a really neat read. It is. It's super it's interesting. Really, and I made it short. So Anybody that wants that book online, just message me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Sean's. Sean's got a free PDF of it. Too. Thank you, thank yeah. you, Sean. And if you can't afford it, I'll send you a PDF. Anybody that wants it, because freely you receive, freely. But if I make it into a book and I put my time in it, then I charge. So, figure it fair enough. And I'm not. Believe me, I'm not. I'm not getting rich on it. So okay, we have to close the class out. Do we have ten minutes? Ten, like say eight, ten, maybe. Get you out of here. As we just look at these, we won't do any more. Uh, these are for you to do at home, okay? Next time, I'll probably have you in class doing some writing. But we have the introduction, so we just couldn't get to it. But I, what I want to do is just go over the first six letters of the alphabet. And then, you, see, you guys have your page here? Mm -hmm. So now your homework's not hard. It's not like you're in class and you got hours of homework. I would love it if you would commit to spending 10 minutes a day. Okay? 10 minutes a day. If you, if you want to do more, fine. But if you can do 10 minutes a day, you're going to keep up with this class. If you'll do that, at the end of this class, you'll be able to read Genesis chapter 1 in Hebrew. And know every single word, every single fixed letter, and know the meaning of every letter. If you, if you, and I've had a lot of classes, if you only ever look at your book on Monday when you come to class, you're going to be like, Sean, you're going too fast. Well, no, you're just going too slow. <laughs> All right? So please try to put a little bit, you do have to put some effort in this, Okay. Um, practice writing your olive. A little bonus is the meanings of the fixed letters. Not every Hebrew letter is a, has a fixed letter usage. And so when they don't, that's just a freebie. You don't have to learn that yet. It's good practice. We're going to learn those things. Alif. As we go through. <laughs> that's cool. That's what I wanted. Which There's is, how to draw it. What's right first? There. What's second? What's there you third? go. I'm going to give you an app free app that you can download on your phone so you can learn to write. Because, you know, I know that we're busy, on the go, right? You're not necessarily going to get to your book. If you can't, 
do this. Let that part of your time be this. That is, did I get it on here? Yeah, download, write it Hebrew. Okay? It's an app, really, I really love this app for learning how to write like the letters. Is it like a touch screen where you write Yeah, I'm doing it right now on oh, my you're phone. Doing it. She's doing it, that's her. And then if it's not quite right, it shows you the right way. Because you don't want to learn something the yeah, wrong way. Yeah, if I do it right, like this, right? then it, it won't let, it, let me do it. Way. That's I just have cool. to get fairly close. So it gives you good penmanship. Does it only do a modern? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so there's Olive, and then I'll review just what I want you guys to do this week. Then you've got your bet, house. You can see how to write it. Okay. Use the book, use your practice page, fill out your practice pages, and also, you know, if you're, a, if you're not a tech person, just write it on paper. If that works better for you, that's good too. So, I'm trying to make this class where you're like everybody succeeds at whatever their strong point is. Um, let's go to Gimel. A Gimel is a camel. Gamal. Gamal. Gimel. Gamal. See, and, and it's like when we talk about meanings of Hebrew words, they're not stretches. They're actually the word for that letter is also something else in Hebrew. It kind of looks Hebrew, like a giraffe. It's a yeah. camel. <laughs> but a camel. Which I think yeah. it's pretty it easy like to remember because it's Gamal Camel. Right. You're only changing yeah. the first letter. Huh. And there's your how to write it. Sounds like G as in girl. Oh, yeah. quick back one page. Page 13. The bet can be a B or V sound. Okay. Just doing it quick. Yeah. And you notice also that there's a numeric value to every letter. So when you get into like gematria, there's mm -hmm. numeric meaning values mm -hmm. of every Hebrew word. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting how okay. those um, words and the numbers sometimes really have fascinating oh, yeah. things. Mm -hmm. Like, um, remember in the book of John after the resurrection, and it says they cast a net. And they took in 153 fish. Mm -hmm. And you're like, why did he do 153? Yeah. The, the, the gematria of 153 is the sons of God, El, sons of Elohim. The B'nai Elohim. Um, Elo, B'nai Elohim, Elohim is 153. Mm -hmm. So it's just interesting. You could call it a coincidence. But, <laughs> you know, I always, I always think that God doesn't do anything accidental. Right. Like everything's very purposeful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you see stuff like that. And so there is some, some people I think carry Gematria a little too far and try to yeah. teach almost anything. And I would put a little caution there. But there is some uh, really good stuff in there too so that we can find. But I always, with caution, don't get, you can get too far in Gematria and you can almost prove anything. And that's, you know. So, okay. Gimel. Dalit is a tent door. If you look at that, oh, Raquel's still up. She's got a hold of my, oh, my screen. Here's See, our Dalit. There's my Dalit. But I was hoping to get back to page 15. Ta da! There we go, Dalit. So that's a hanging tent door. See that? Mm -hmm. I know it didn't look like a door, but it is. And there's your oh, tent yeah. door at an angle. Often you see it. You know, a tent door, paleo door. Oh. Dalit sounds like D, numeric value of four. Hey. That's, That's a letter. I wasn't trying to get your attention. <laughs> That's exactly what it means. Hey. <laughs> and it means, hey, behold. The paleo, you know, would look like a guy with his hands raised. And then they flipped it on its side, which is that paleo letter which kind of morphed a little bit and that has the fixed letter usage of the I'm not asking you to memorize that right now what I want you to do is get your Aleph bet down and then we'll start getting those fixed letter usages later in the class okay and then is this letter six Bob yes okay Bob everybody say Bob Bob, Bob. V used to be a W or a, a softer sound in the ancient Hebrew. 
So when Hebrew changed, um, you know, then it became the. But more anciently, it was a softer sound. <coughs> and that has all kinds of stuff going on for <laughs> reversing verb tenses, fixed letter. It'll be sure to confuse you at first. So don't, <laughs> you know, introduce it to your brain. You don't have to memorize it yet. We will spend time on the Bob as we go through Genesis 1. All right. We were just going to do six, right? So that's it. Now, a few, few other things. Okay, I want to make an announcement for the Facebook Live. If you are interested in doing this class, we have these books, which you're not able to see. Will be You can order the book and the flashcards, and you also get the video of me teaching it. And then in the video, the pages that you're not seeing will be in the video right there. And so you'll be able... And this is something that you guys will get as a resource is that we're recording this and you get to go back through the classes. If you don't get something, um, you can go back and review it. And instead of being there, I'm going to put it there in the video when I edit the video. Okay? All right. Homework. Not a lot. I just want you guys to learn that, that focus on those six letters we did. Okay? Write them out. Review. Go ahead and read through the book, 3 through 17. It's kind of large font, pretty easy to read through. And then go through all of through Vav in the alphabet section. Okay? Fill them out. Uh, if you want to do techie stuff, get that. And I've given you all the links. So you don't have to do it once a day, but it'd be good. Maybe do it three times a day. I don't know. Yeah. Or maybe do it every other day. Whatever you can do. Just do what you can do. I'm just asking you to put in effort. I'm not, it's not going to be like, oh, you didn't do your homework. I'm afraid to go to class. Okay. It's just going to be sad because you'll start falling behind. We'll just make you sit in the corner. No, no dunce hat. <laughs> All right. So write, just learn, and don't, you can try to get ahead, but really what I want you to do is do the six, get them down, get them down good, right? So that you don't forget them like a month later. Spend time on them. And there's your links. That's it. Just pretty simple. There will be, you know, a little bit more to do in other classes. So thanks, everybody. Thank you. 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 Th